my name is Frankie, or aka Frankie J. Uh, based in London, from London, UK. I'm currently here in New York. Uh, I'm a house dancer representing Plague uh, Dance Company, Soul Footwork, In The House UK, Soy Generis, Quarters Movement, Rhythmatic Crew. Um, so yeah, it's a few names. <laughs> um, and yeah, currently here um, developing my knowledge and also developing myself in hip hop dance culture here in New York City. Oh, my my favorite drink. Um, that's a really tough one. I really like mango juice <laughs> or mango flavored things. So like, um, I'm a big fruit fan. So I'd have to say anything mango wise or also cherry. I like cherry flavors. Cherry, cherry, cherry flavors. Um, but yeah, juice though, juice in particular, I really like. So yeah, something fruity, but mango and cherry, for sure. The most interesting phrase, um, one that um, sticks into mind that um, I was told by another dancer called Ricky Soul um, from France, Otri Pals. He was someone who had said to me once about um, see the music and hear the dance. And this quote or this phrase um, is something that has always stuck in my mind um, very clearly um, as it's something that I very much utilize in how I perceive or watch or interpret do the dance itself um, and every time I, I see his face and I hear his voice in my head when he says it and it's something that I've, I've followed for maybe now a couple of years. Um, it, he's someone that I admire a lot and is a dancer that I, I really look up to. And so when he has shared that with me, that's something I think for a while it, or for the rest of my life will stick with me because I think the value of that quote or the phrase um, is something that I can really relate to. See the music, hear the dance. As a, as a normal person, Aside from being a dancer, I come from um, a city called Bristol, based in the southwest, UK. Um, my mother is from originally from Scotland, and uh, my father uh, moved to the UK from Jamaica um, at a really young age. Um, so the diversity in my background is very, very, very different, especially in like Scottish or Celtic culture, and then you have like Caribbean culture, which I mean, in similarities, like family-wise, they're very similar, but I mean, they come from two different ends or two different spectrums, so um, the values are very much the same, but just how they are interpreted are, are very different. Um, but the, equally, the, the two things that um, they share is that a lot of my family on both sides have a passion for music um, and also are very artistic, um, whether that is through music or whether that's through art or is through dance and um, I share, I think that's something that has helped to cultivate what I have interest in or also like what I just love to do naturally or have a passion for. For me, very much my background has a lot of influence on what I, I'm doing today, which is persevering in, in hip hop dance culture and also dance culture itself uh, and being able to explore that more and more and more and very luckily be able to use that as something that I do as a career. So um, my background is very, very, very much, I would say, interlinked with what I'm doing today. Um, I think I have a few to list as like really powerful inspirations. Um, one is the music, definitely. Music is always, for me, the, the foundation or it's key for me to really find a source of inspiration whether that is uh, in link to movement or whether that's in link to visualization so when I say visualization I mean kind of like having ideas in my head and kind of foreseeing what it is that I could try and do in the future I would also say the people around me like people itself like not just dancers as well like people who just inspire me as, as themselves and are people that help to motivate my successes and so that you know people who are successful in what it, whatever it is that they do I like to seek that that same opportunity that other people have so that you know it's something that helps to motivate me and push me 
um, and great dancers obviously I love to be inspired by great dancers um, people who really show like an individualism to their style or their interpretation um, and I mean I have all kinds of dancers that I can list as sources of inspiration yeah I think my, my inspiration comes from not just solely like through art but just general life because um, is I think me as a person I, I, I meet so many different people that it would be it would be ignorant of me just to say that dance is my only inspiration so yeah there's it's a massive amount like my but my, my base would be music because music for me kind of drives me in, in all kinds of way um, not just dance alone Ooh. what is house dance um, so I'll try and keep this very brief so house for me I'll start off with me because obviously it's very very different to what, how people view it but house for me um, symbolizes community it symbolizes individualism confidence love peace unity freedom and house in itself the phrase you know all under one house is says it all for me it, it, it in within that phrase it's the thing that that rounds up all of those things that I just listed and it's for you to cultivate and to learn about what is your particular house and once you start to find that and resolve in what it is that you find is your house for me that's where it really starts to make more sense and for you to really understand it because there's no point me telling you or telling the camera that house is this house is that because house is different for everybody but um what i can definitely say is that when it comes to different aspects of house or house culture um everyone has their own take on it and i say that because i've had luckily the chances to to learn about house culture from very 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 special people very different individuals and so it would be silly of me to just say one thing and say that that it's that because for me that wouldn't be true because I've learned so many different variations of what people say is, is, is house for them so um, yeah very much again house is, house is huge for me and the house is a movement where um, it brings a lot of people together um, and it's something that is forever going to hopefully keep growing and will keep developing <laughs> That's a really tough one. I think for me, one that sticks out, I don't know if, it, from, if it's my favorite, but one for me that sticks out was when I got to visit the United States for the first time and it was back in 2009, 2009. And then I also came back to the States in 2010, both around the same time as my birthday. And so that was <laughs> really good because for me, um, just the opportunity to see other places around the world is for me a really amazing gift and yeah lots of my family helped me out to come out to um, the US but also I think the one time that I really really remember is there's a there's a really famous club in London which a lot of dancers go to called Madame Jojo's it's unfortunately closed but I was there for my 20 21st I think my 22nd or 21st I can't, can't remember I think it's my 21st and um, everyone who was at the club that night had celebrated my birthday and they threw me like a big party like all my friends were there and all the dancers that I get down with and stuff were there and yeah it was just a really cool celebration I just remember it being a really really fantastic time so yeah for me the that is definitely like a, a, a memorable part of one of my birthdays for sure or as a birthday gift So I've been dancing since um, the age of 10. Um, I started off in classical. So I was learning a lot of contemporary, a lot of ballet techniques. Um, and I came across a dancer called Crazy Johnson, um, who is based in, in, in the UK. He's currently in London, but I, I met him in my home city, in Bristol. He was uh, putting together a piece which was for young boys or young male dancers in the city uh, and it was in celebration for Bruno Kingdom, um, Bruno Isambard Kingdom which is um, a famous architect, uh, UK architect and it was his 200th birthday celebration I believe. 
he uh, invited me to be in the piece and this was the first time I, I'd ever really experienced learning some popping. Um, like really basic Fresno, um, learning how to contract the muscles, um, working on different basic techniques in the dance style and I think I was age 14 at the time, age 14, 15. The piece must have been I think like, like a five minute piece but we used elements of popping, elements of b-boying um, and just general street dance and for me once doing this project I got roped into it, I got really hooked onto it and I ended up dancing in a foundational training scheme called um, Swindon Youth Dance Academy which is based in another town called Swindon and from the ages of 14 up to 19 I was on that course um, learning with practitioners in different hip-hop dance styles so I got to learn many 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 different hip-hop dance styles with very good practitioners as what they were doing was trying to give a little bit of everything for everyone on the course so that they could kind of find something that related to them or that they could find that was was their, their comfort. Um, so I got a lot of information over the, the five to six years I was there. And, and and ever since then I've never looked back. It's it's been the thing that, that had set me off and has very fortunately put me in touch with many, 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 many amazing different people and people for example who I uh, who I'm with here in this city right now so it's like it's 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 all accumulated from from the age of 14 all the way up to the age of 24 so I've been doing this for now 10 years um, still very new still very new in the game but also I feel like I've learned a lot in in 10 years as well it's something like I think forever I'm forever going to keep progressing in and growing in and stuff and it's something I feel like I'll never ever ever get bored of either. I think it's just something that is part of me and it's something that I want to try and help to pass on to kids and to pass on to people who seek it in the same way that I did too um, as that's also going back to the inspiration that's also a source of my inspiration is, is, is the younger generation being able to pass on the information that I had to try so hard to seek out because there's a lot of people out there that have to put in a lot of graft and a lot of hard work to try and find it. Um, and sometimes, it, you know, there's only a few people who can luckily say that it's on their doorstep and that they can go around the corner to just find it. So I want to be there to try and assist and help people by spreading the information. Yeah. Um, so one of my mottos would be just to just to always show thanks and to be grateful um, and show your courtesy um, to the people that you learn from because for me I find it really important that there should always be respect to the people that share with you no matter who they are, no matter whether they've been doing it twice as long as you or not even half the time you've been doing it. I think anyone at any level can share with you and be able to show you something new and no matter what, whether you consider yourself higher than somebody else, which you should never do really anyway, but if you ever consider yourself better than somebody or stronger at something else than somebody else, you should always still show respect and give time to those people to be able to, to show what they can do because at the end of the day, we were all, we were, myself and other people are all given time to show what we could do to get us to the point where we are today. So for me, it's really important and I always live by that motto. I always give time to people that, that want to share with me and also be able to teach me something and I'm always accepting that because I want to learn. So that's definitely a motto I live by. And also just to, just to try and live life happily as I can and get through the, the, the stuff that can bring you down and just to always try and stay positive because I think also that's something that will keep you sane. <laughs> and won't kind of bring you into the gutter. Um, I've always grew up as a city boy and being in the city is something that can easily catch you up and can eat you alive if you, if you, you, know, if you don't stay true to yourself and to stay happy and to, and to keep driving and to keep working hard. So for me that's also like something I consider a lot. And just to do what it is that you love to do, be honest to yourself, don't ever do anything that, where you ever feel forced to do it because um, I think life is about trying to find the things that you enjoy most and trying to fulfill fully what it is that you love. So 
to, to find more information and to seek further um, knowledge, to seek further investment in yourself. Um, so yeah, I think I think those are like some of the top mottos, mottos I, I live by. So yeah, I think me problems with my parents. I think I was quite lucky. Um, I've been, I like especially my mum. Like my mother has always, always, always been kind of like my backbone when it comes to dance, and always had put so much trust into me because I was always telling her that that was something that I always wanted to do and she always believed in that even though there's been our ups and downs naturally um, at times where I thought something wasn't going to work out or it did and stuff like I think that's kind of the, the whole roller coaster of life in general um, but she's always been my backbone and has always shown me support and also like my grandmother as well and, and all my family I think all of my family know how important dance is to me and how much they can see that it's something that I really want to persevere in and pursue. I'm just really happy how it's turned out so far and I, I don't have any regrets. I mean because there's a lot of dancers or artists for example that I come across who get quite deep into the deep into the, the lifestyle and then they kind of have second thoughts and it's almost like having to turn all the way back through the maze and trying to find your way back out but people make choices and you know my choice has always been to just keep looking forward because it's something that I that drives me because of my passion and because of my love for it in genuine so for me even though it's difficult at times and and it's hard work it's also really fun for me and it's always just I love the challenge I love the sense of the challenge as well so for me to know that I'm working hard because I really want to make something out of this for me is is, is is a purpose. I feel like that's a real purpose for me. So um, yeah, so my family um, and my parents definitely um, see that see that hunger in me, which is which is I, I have to be very thankful for. Um, and I, I you know I have big love for them all the time because they they give me so much love and support. My favorite clothing brand, I would say. I really like, I have a few I think, but I really like LRG and um, I really like Dickie clothing as well, Dickie's clothing, because especially as a dancer, a lot of people can relate, they just have a really good hard, you could say hardware, like they, they, they have a good duration so they, they don't, it's not clothing that will get damaged very easily, um, so for, for moving about and for, for training and doing shows and you know all the physical activities that take place in in, in, in that field, um, it's it's hard worthy clothing that I'd say good for the um, for the job you could say. And also I'm a big fan of Puma. I used to work for Puma as well. So Puma Footwear, Puma Suede, um, Puma Trinomic. Um, is there anything else that I'm a big fan of? I mean, me, I'm, I'm quite, I, I, I pick and choose some, if I see something I like, I take it kind of thing. Like, um, I don't think I have like a particular one where I have like lots and lots and lots and lots of that particular thing. But those are a couple of things I definitely like, uh, like as favorite brands, for sure. But yeah, I'm quite, I'm quite easy going. I like a lot of things. So for me, the first one, just because I admire this man a lot and even till now, like very, very, very recently, he's done a lot for me and um, has shown me a lot about the culture that I'm so passionate about. And uh, every time I've taken his class or I have trained with him, he's just given me so much and he's always putting my brain on fire because it's just, it, it's, it's the amount of information that he gives is just fantastic, um, would be Mr. Tony McGregor. You know, he's a resident here in, in, in the States. For me, he, he's somebody um, that I've learned a lot from in a very short amount of time. His, his approach to the dance is something that I see in myself. And so it's, it's something that I can relate to very quickly, I think, and very easily. And um, whenever he dances, he, he just motivates me. He motivates me because he's one of my favorite dancers to watch. Um, so without a doubt, easy there and done would be he would be one class to take for sure 
Uh, another one that I found really, really nice, like a one-off class that I did, uh, was with B-Boy Menno. B-Boy Menno from, from, from Holland. Um, and he did a workshop at Summer Dance Forever this year in August. And funny enough, like I would say, like 85 to 90 percent of the class that were there were non B boys, which was was really interesting because he's obviously a world renowned B boy. And uh, what was nice about his his class and his approach is that he taught his movement in a way that could be accessible from whatever background or dance background that you have. So it wasn't strictly B boy uh, B boy interpretation but it was methods and ideas and concepts of being able to use your body in a particular way. So for example, like floor work, or being able to use level changes between floor and standing up, breakdowns, um, how to control your weight, your balance over the floor as well, to spread your weight equally across the floor, things like that. So um, that for me is incredible and useful information for whatever style you do, um, and is um, something that can be valuable in whatever style you do. So for me, that was something that I, I, I would definitely always have as a, as, as a thought or remember in my head. Another teacher I was, I thought, wow. <laughs> my third one would have to be um, Feiss from Pro Fenderman, Serial Steppers. Reason being, this man for me is incredible as a dancer and as an artist just as a human being as a mentor i was very lucky to have the chance to um, have him as a mentor at the serial steppers boot dance camp this year and also Feiss has done a lot of work in london as well with some of the dancers in london his his brain is just it's it's just a box full of completely genius ideas and methods of of his vision and it was kind of what I was saying earlier about it's important to, to stay true to your vision and how you interpret something because his vision of hip-hop or his vision as an artist or his vision of dance is it's it's beautiful like it's 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 hip-hop but it's his version and it's 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 just so accessible to so many other things and he doesn't limit himself in in walls like his he has so many other branches that go off into different ideas and for me that's just really inspirational and is something that I hope to try and envision and how I view the the dance myself and funny enough like I don't really train much hip-hop but every time I've taken his class as well I've always just come out like completely buzzing and like just motivates me and always makes me want to come back to his next class and um, just also the way he gets you to work mentally and physically makes you makes you again to challenge what it is that you do and it helps you to challenge new things and to push yourself further and further and further so that you don't just get caught up in the same old loop um, you can always find yourself getting to a wall which you need to overcome which is which is what it's all about um, so for me he would definitely be in my top three um, so yeah Tony McGregor, Vice, B1 Menem Yes. I have to give it up to Ajaz. Ajaz has been someone I've been listening to for a long time and if anyone who listens to as much house music as I do and obviously all the house heads out there will know who Ajaz is um, and also he's a resident of the UK, London, so um, his sound in particular is something that is resonates highly within me and highly within the UK house dance community as well and obviously around the uh, around the world as well so yeah he's definitely like I, I can list 10 of his tracks which are, are favorites of mine so it's like without a doubt he would be in my top um, or one of my favorites to listen to uh, I'm a big house head so I'm probably gonna say three house artists I'm also a big fan of Kerry Chandler without a doubt without a doubt there's yeah i was just about to say there's no other words that has to say anything kerry chandler is kerry chandler so yeah kerry um Ajaz. and a third one i mean as an artist she's not like my favorite but this as a track or this as an anthem 
um, actually I have two if I can make it four because so um, two songs in particular um, that play a huge influence into my development of uh, of music and also my love for dance how dance and house music um, would be one Robin S show me love um, reason being um, this track for me is just like an anthem for life it's one of the most world famous dance tracks house tracks to ever come out um, Robin S is a singer if anyone doesn't know from the US but the song was produced in the UK before it was released in the US um, uh, so it was a, it was a massive hit in the UK um, and um, also the other track that has a big significance in my development is also uh, Armin van Helden uh, you don't even know me um, those tracks for me are just they just they're like two favorite dance anthems of mine which um, have always been something that I always relate back to as some of the first tracks I listened to as a kid um, and and hooked me into the you know the, the four by four um, rhythm and just the sound of, of dance house music um, so for me like that was kind of like my starter kit um, for house music or to get into the house sound so at jazz Robin S Armin van Helden Kerry Chandler that's right then four for sure are people who like significantly inspire me musically or should I say that's they, those are a list of music that have insp that inspire me like in all kinds of ways for sure So recently, like very, very recently, I'd say Fred P, um, which was very nicely shared with me by uh, Tony McGregor. He told me a lot about his music quite recently whilst being here in New York City. The reason why I mentioned Fred P is that his sound is, is very unique. Um, it has a very dark sense to it, like dark house, um, very minimal, very tech. Um, and also for me, it's like, when I hear that music, it makes me think of Tony, and Tony is obviously someone that I admire a lot, and um, is someone that um, I love to watch to dance as well. So when I hear his music, I just envision the whole, the whole um, movement of Tony dancing, and also just like me being inspired by the music to practice and to, and to you know to keep pushing. So for me, when I hear songs that inspire me doing all of these things all at once, for me it's always like. Yeah, that has to be something that means a lot. So, Fred P. One track from Fred P. that I've been listening to a lot is um, called Emotive Vibrations. Uh, Fred P. Emotive Vibrations, this track, I really love. For example, like everything I just said then, this track makes me do that. <laughs> um, another track definitely that has inspired me greatly recently and like in the past is Logic, Blues For You. The song is called Blues For You and it's by Logic and this is more classic, classic house, like back in the day house. Um, this track is like an anthem for me. Um, I've done like judge demos of this track all the time and um, naturally a favourite of mine. Um, again, motivates me in, in lots of different ways. And then the last track, funny enough, is a track that's not released, but it's made by a friend of mine back in London called Garth, Garth Thomas. Um, and he very very kindly shared this track with me a few months ago as I was listening to one of his online mixtapes I asked him I was just like yo I need to know this song I need to know this song he very kindly said that he would send it to me so he sent it to me and what I did is there was one little event that I was judging in London and I in respect to him for, set, for giving me the track I did a judge demo to the song for him and I filmed it um, but in the future I really want to do another video to it because for me I want to do the song justice so for me I want to make sure that I get the opportunity to be able to do something like really solid to it um, which I'm planning to do but this song inspires me all the time because because of that reason because that I want to, to try and push and create something really amazing from it and for me when I hear music that's created by a friend of mine and is also from the UK and is house and stuff it for me that I feel really proud because I'm like I'm always told by so many people outside of London how how much London has such a great music community 
or a great music industry and so like it feels very empowering to be able to enjoy and dance to music which comes from right under your doorstep and also be able to say that that, that is something that you, you favorite or it's something that you really like to listen to and so for me that song alone also would be up in my top so the song is called uh, Feels Good but my friend who made it, his name is Garth Thomas, he's a film director as well as a dancer, an amazing DJ too, very talented man. And so yeah, all three tracks would be um, yeah, Logic Boost For You, Garth Thomas, Feels Good, ah, Fred P, yes, Fred P Emotive Vibrations. And again, they're all very different sounding variations, very different styles of house music. So for me, even though I'm a house head, I love house music, My, I'm very... Um, collected with the variations of house music you can get or the influences of house music that you can get nowadays as from as you all know that house music the genre is huge so those three songs are are definite inspirations right now stay tuned <laughs>